Hello dear students, my name is Akshay Agarwal and today I am going to take you through the guidelines for the JIPMAT 2024 form filling. So as you all know, JIPMAT is the entrance exam to get admission into the IPM program that is Integrated Program in Management at IIM Jammu and IIM Bodh Gaya. So if you are applying for JIPMAT, you are by default applying for the IPM program at IIM Jammu as well as Bodh Gaya. So before we go ahead with the form filling guidelines, let me quickly take you through a few important points and eligibility criteria at IIM Jammu as well as IIM Bodh Gaya. Let us look at IIM Jammu first. You need to clear the class 12th exam in the year 2022 or 2023 or you must have appeared for the exam in 2024. Also for class 10th, you must have cleared the exam in 2020 or later, not before 2020. Further, you also need to score 60% marks in these examinations to be eligible for the JIPMAT 2024 application. If you are belonging to one of the reserved categories like SC, ST and PWD, then the criteria reduces to 55% in these exams. All students who will clear the class 12th exam by 31st July 2024 can apply for IIM Jammu. Further, students who have taken class 12th through international boards like IGCSE and IB can also apply. We expect the number of seats at IIM Jammu to be 140. The eligibility criteria for IIM Bodh Gaya is similar to IIM Jammu. However, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that the class 12th should be cleared or passed in the year 2023 or appeared in 2024. However, one key point here is that IIM Bodh Gaya has not yet updated the eligibility criteria for this year. This is based on the criteria that they had announced last year. Also, the number of seats that we expect in IIM Bodh Gaya is 120. So let's go ahead and fill up the JIPMAT 2024 form. Now, before we go to the website, I'll just quickly show you how you can navigate to that website. You can either note the website which was given at the beginning of this video or you can also visit the website which would be mentioned in the description here. However, if you want to quickly search the website, you can Google JIPMAT 2024 and the first result that comes up, which is the NTA result, the NTA website, you can click on that. It will take you to the NTA website. Now here you can see the option click here to log in. Now this is the only valid link as of the time when this video is released. So click here to log in and this takes you to the registration page of JIPMAT 2024. Now before you know filling up the login details you need to register. So there is an option to register new users here. So you need to register here and then go ahead with the application for JIPMAT 2024. So let's go ahead and register. First of all, before you register, you need to go through these important guidelines or instructions from NTA. So there is an option to download the information bulletin. So click on the button to download the information bulletin. I will also take you through a few important points of the information bulletin. This is how the information bulletin for JIPMAT looks like. As we scroll down, let us look at the key points here. So I'll just go directly to the key points. Number one here, you can see the website has been given. The important dates have been mentioned. So the last date to register or complete your application form is 21st April, 5 p.m. only. And they've also given you one day grace period to complete the payment. That is, you need to complete the payment by 22nd April. The exam will happen on the 2nd June 2024 and also you'll also get the you know results very quickly that is you'll get the results in June first week itself and further details will be announced as we go ahead. Moving forward, they've also mentioned that the test would be conducted in online mode. Also, importantly, these are the four important steps that they have mentioned on their in their information bulletin, which you also need to keep in mind. So the first important step is register for the online registration using your own email ID and mobile number. 
please do not use your parents' email IDs or your relatives' email IDs or your friends' email IDs. This email ID is very important. It should remain active till the end of the admission procedure and likewise for the mobile number as well. Then the step two is after registering and creating a profile, you need to complete the application for GIPMAT 2024. The step three is to upload the online documents. So you need to upload your photograph, your signature and if you are applying for PWD category, then you also need to upload the appropriate documents. And the step four obviously is to pay the application fee or the registration fee for the examination. Now all these four steps can be done together or can be done, you know, one, one step at a time and you can take breaks in between. I would strongly suggest that you do this entire process in one sitting and get done with it and focus on your preparation part then. So let's go ahead. The remaining part which is, you know, taking a printout of your uh, application form and, uh, you know, re retaining your application number is something which is common. You'll get the application number in your email as well. So you don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead and start with the registration process now. So as you go ahead, the first thing before we begin the application process or the registration process is they give you all the guidelines about you know what kind of a password would you use and everything. So going forward, they ask you for an identity proof. Again, this is not your parents' identity proof. This is not your relatives' identity proof. This is your own, the students' identity proof. So you need to choose what kind of an identity proof are you going to use for this registration. Is it an Aadhaar card or a PAN card? Whether you have an Aadhaar card, whether you have a PAN card, if you don't have a PAN card, do you have an academic bank of, bank of credit that is ABC ID? If you don't have an ABC ID, do you wish to create an ABC ID etc. So choose the most suitable option. If you have an Aadhaar card, which I think most of the students would have, I would suggest that you use the Aadhaar card or the PAN card to register for this examination. So select the appropriate option and enter the ID number and click to proceed. So as you proceed to the next step, you will then have to enter your name and other such personal details. Now, I don't think anyone needs any guidance here. However, as you enter the name, there is a very important instruction that the name has to be as, as per the class 10th mark sheet. So please be very careful about this. If you enter the name, which may not be as per your class 10th mark sheet, you might face, you know, cancellation of your application even after having secured great marks in the examination. So be careful about this. So I'll go ahead. I think all the details here are, uh, you know, very trivial. You can enter them as you know them. Moving forward, gender, your identity type, identification number. Again, identity type is PAN card, Aadhaar card. You can also use the admit card of your class 10th or class 12th examination which has a photograph on it. You need to enter the right address, the correct address, your present address which would be used for your correspondence and later on there will also be an option to enter the permanent address. So let's go ahead. As we go ahead you also enter the permanent address. You have an option to select permanent address same as the present address. So you can do that. Further you need to select a password. Again. All the instructions related to the password were given earlier. So you need to use a capital letter, a small letter, a special character and a number. And I think the length of the password has to be uh, between 8 to 15 characters. So select an appropriate password. Also you'll have an option to select a security question. So remember what answer you are entering here. So with this, let us go ahead to the next part of the registration. So after you enter this and click to save and proceed, you will be shown, you will be asked a prompt that do you need to submit this and then you will be shown all your entries, all the entries that you have made here in the form till now and you will have to confirm whether the details entered are correct or not. In fact, for all the important details, they've also mentioned, they've also put a checkbox. So there's a checkbox, you need to select, okay, that your name is correct, your father's name is correct, mother's name is correct. So each of these checkbox needs, needs to be selected. And then you need to select on I agree and only then you'll be able to click on submit and send OTP. The OTP is going to go on your email ID. So open your email ID and check what OTP you have received. So at this stage, you would have received an OTP. Check your email ID and enter the correct OTP and the correct CAPTCHA code here. 
and once you verify your email id your registration is complete the step one is complete now you would have got a registration number on your email so preserve that retain that till the end of the admission process because that would be one number which would be used for your identification in this examination process the next step is to complete your application for GIPMAT 2024 examination. So here, it will again take you to the login page and now you would have to log in with your application ID. So go to your email ID and get that application number and enter the application number here. Also the password that you had yourself selected. So enter that password and enter the security pin that is displayed in a CAPTCHA code here and log in. Now when you log in, you go in for the second step that is completing the application part. Now again in application, you will further have to enter all the personal details, academic details again. But hang on, the good part is that since most of the details have been entered earlier, you just have to enter the details which were not entered earlier. So it takes all the details like name and your class 10th, your class 12th scores etc. Whatever was entered earlier directly. Whatever was not entered earlier, you'll have to enter now. So first of all, all the personal details like name, your nationality, mother's name, father's name, address, the ID proof, etc. So check whichever things are not, not yet entered, enter them and go ahead with this step. Moving on, here at this step, you'll find that there are two things which you need to be very careful about. First thing is selection of category. If you belong to the open category, you need to select general and you are means unreserved. So if you are open category student, you will select general and in the brackets it would be you are. Otherwise, if you belong to one of the reserved categories, you need to select the right category. The next important step would involve selecting the PWD status. If you are a PWD that is a physical person with disability, then you need to have the right certificates with you. And even for all the above reservation categories, if you are selecting any of these categories, you will have to furnish all the certificates at the time of admission. And if you do not have the right certificates, your admission will stand cancelled. So be very careful about it. And if you are applying to any of these categories, please be sure of you know having the valid certificates at the time of admission. So select the type of disabilities, percentage of disability, all the details of your disability and enter. If you are not a person with disability, then you can select the option as no and you would not have to enter all these details. So going back to you know the, the page where these options were displayed. So again, you enter all the details and go to the next part. The next step involves entering all the qualifying exam details. By qualifying exams, we mean the class 10th and the class 12th details. So if you look at it, you, need, you just need to enter whether you have cleared or passed the class 10th exams or you are appearing for it or whether you have cleared the class 12th exams or you are appearing for it. Now I did not find anything which could be tricky over here except for the type of schooling or the qualifying exam. These two things which had very long details. So either you would have to zoom out your browser to read all the details or you can simply you know select uh, if you are able to read the entire line select the most appropriate line. So be careful while selecting the qualifying exam. So I could see 10 plus 2 uh, uh, boards. Uh, so basically one had state board and ISC etc. But they had written the full form. So because it was in the full form, the line becomes very long and sometimes it would go outside your browser window. So be careful and uh, you know, you can zoom out to read correctly what each line is and select the appropriate option which is suitable for you. Okay, so place of schooling, type of school or college, so place of schooling is urban or rural, type of school is aided, unaided, private, government, etc. So all those details I think you would have, but these details, urban or you know private or, uh, or government school and all are not very important. However, I would recommend that you know you know what kind of school or a college you uh, you know studied at and enter the correct details only. Moving forward, just like you have to enter the class 10th details, you also have to enter the class 12th details. So class 12th details again, past status, 
most of the students who are appearing for JIPMAT would be would have appeared for class 12th unless you have taken the exam last year and already passed the exam. If you are taking the exam this year, your status would be appeared and year of appearing would be 2024. For others, if you have passed the exam earlier, select the appropriate year and complete this set of uh, details also. Select on I agree, save and go ahead. Moving on, the next step would involve entering the exam center details. Now again, this is also very important. So not a lot of centers like if I select Maharashtra, there was Mumbai slash Navi Mumbai, then there was Pune, Nagpur, Aurangabad, Nanded. So five or six options. And if you look at these cities, each of these cities is five or six hours away. So therefore, you need to select the cities as per the distance. Don't select very far away cities. Or rather, I would suggest in your first preference, select your home city or the closest city. But for the second, third, fourth option, select cities where you, you have someone, you know, where you can stay one day before the exam. So if you have a relative or maybe, you know, you can make stay arrangements in a hotel, but you know, you have reliable places over there so that, you know, you don't, you know, face any other difficulties apart from, you know, come taking the exam on the exam day, right? So be careful about selecting the right city and the right state. So moving on, finish this place and go ahead to the next page. Now this step involves uploading the documents. Now not a lot of documents, you just have to upload your photograph and your signature. But they've given the type of file and the dimension in which they need it. So the file has to be a JPEG or a JPG file only. And the picture or the photograph has to be from 10 KB to 200 KB. And the signature has to be between 4 KB to 30 KB. So make sure you, you know how to you know save your save these pictures in the required size. If you do not know, just Google how to reduce the size of picture using paint. It is very easy to reduce the uh, you know, size or the resolution of the image in paint and reduce its size to the required size. So try doing that. That is very easy. Save it in the required format and upload it. And I think with this, we complete the last step of the application part. So once this is done, it will again give you a prompt to verify all the details that you have entered at this point. You again go through all the details, make sure that every detail is correctly entered. And again, they will provide you check boxes to verify whether you have checked all the details or not. So, you know, you'll, you'll see a check box. Have you checked your name? Have you checked father's name? Have you checked your mother's name, etc. And then you agree and click on final submit. Once you click on final submit, the next step would involve making the payment and completing this process, the last step of this process. So the last pay step, fee payment. You click on fee payment. It will show you the appropriate fee depending on what category you have selected. Click on pay now and complete your application process. So that's all about the JIPMAT application process. I hope this video was helpful. For tips on how to crack JIPMAT and other important videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned with all the updates related to UG, BBA and IPM exams. So all the best and do well.